LinkedIn is one of the most efficient methods of acquiring new clients through paid advertising for B2B companies. And in this video, I'm gonna talk you through everything you need to know to explode your growth with LinkedIn ads in 2022. So in this video, we're gonna go through all the strategic decisions you need to make to ensure LinkedIn ads work for you. And we're also gonna go through some of the tactics you need to employ to make LinkedIn ads work for you. We're gonna look at what the top performing companies do that make their ads successful. And we're gonna look at what 90% of companies do that make their ads not successful. That's things you need to avoid like the plague. We're also gonna delve into how to know if LinkedIn ads are right for your exact situation. We're also gonna look at different funnel types. I'm gonna give you insights into the, the correct figures you should be seeing when you run LinkedIn ad campaigns. As this is an ultimate guide, there is a lot of information in here. So I've put timestamps in the description below and you'll also see them on the playhead at the bottom of the video. So you can skip to any relevant sections you want to know more about. So first off, we're gonna look at what makes LinkedIn ads so amazing. You need to understand this because each platform has its own pros and cons. You need to ensure that LinkedIn, the pros of that platform, suit your exact situation. Why should you use LinkedIn ads over Facebook or Google PPC, for example? The reason that LinkedIn is so amazing is because of its targeting. LinkedIn is a B2B, that's a business to business, social media platform. And as a result, when you sign up, you um, submit loads of information about your career, what company you work for, what your job title is, your experience, etc., etc. That sort of information isn't stored on other social networks. So for example, Facebook can't tell you um, what company you work for, the size of that company, your exact job title. Whereas within LinkedIn, you can set targeting within the ad campaign manager that says, I only want to speak to marketing managers of organizations that work in tech in the United States with uh, over 1,000 employees. You can't do that anywhere else. And that is the advantage of LinkedIn. LinkedIn as a social networking platform has created a hangout spot for all um, business to business uh, professionals and that's where they tend to hang out. So it's pulled all of these ideal people that you wanna to speak to in one place. And in their ad platform, you have the ability to target very specific roles and you don't have that ability elsewhere. That's what makes LinkedIn so amazing. As a result of that insane targeting, LinkedIn tends to give you very high quality leads. So if you ran an identical campaign on LinkedIn and you ran it on Facebook, you would tend to see better quality leads. That's people who worked in larger companies, people who had more intent behind buying. You would tend to see those leads be um, more valuable on LinkedIn than you would on Facebook. So what are the cons of LinkedIn? Well, unfortunately, the cons are as a result of the pros. Because you have such amazing access to very specific targeting, you pay for the privilege. LinkedIn is one of the most expensive advertising platforms. Um, and the reason it is, is because you can be so specific. So if you ran an ad campaign on LinkedIn and on Facebook, you would see a far greater cost just for putting your ads in front of people for impressions. Impressions are just your ad being displayed to someone on that platform. It costs way more on LinkedIn, and as a result of those impressions costing more, everything else costs more. Generally, you pay more uh, per click, and you pay more per lead, or per demo, or per sales inquiry, whatever your key metric might be. Also, another con is it's not that easy. On Facebook, you can get away with a lot. Because Facebook is really cheap in terms of you presenting your ads to the right sorts of people, you can write ads that aren't necessarily that well created. They can be a little bit janky around the sides. The ad copy might not be ideal. The headlines might not be perfect. Your funnel might not be that well thought out and you can still be profitable. On LinkedIn, you can't do that. You can't just approach the ad platform and write, here is our service, please buy now, and then put that up as an ad. It never works because it's such an expensive platform. So you need to be very experienced with running ads to make it work for you. Don't worry, I'm gonna talk you through everything you need to know to be experienced to run those ads in this video. Additionally, my company Tech Growth Marketing are currently giving away free marketing strategy sessions. Basically, we'll sit with you and go through your exact situation, help figure out how you can make LinkedIn ads work for you. We use all of our experience running ad campaigns 
for loads of companies on LinkedIn and we can save you a whole load of time, a whole load of trial and error just by telling you what will work and what won't work. If you do want to apply for that call, there's a link in the description below. So what are the main mistakes that people make on LinkedIn? Well, the first big one is they treat LinkedIn ads like they would treat Google PPC ads i.e. they would have their service and they would put an ad up which is just their logo and it says here's our service it's cost this much please get in contact with us for a quote and it doesn't work on LinkedIn. The reason that it doesn't work is because on Google PPC someone has typed in I would like this thing they go to a website and they want to know that information they have high intent because they've typed that into a search engine. On LinkedIn you're looking at people across the whole spectrum of your target audience people who have the problem um, and aren't necessarily immediately looking for a solution but they're aware they have the problem people who have the problem and are looking for a solution but aren't immediately ready to buy and you also have people who are immediately ready to buy and looking for a solution but you have that whole spectrum by creating ads that are immediately trying to sell you only speak to a small section of that um, whole target audience uh, within the platform and as a result your ads are way less effective so you need to have a strategic approach that matches um, where your audience is at on that platform. I will talk you through what approaches you need in the funnel section of this video. The next mistake that a lot of people make is that their ads are really narcissistic. And what I mean by that is their ads are all about them. They talk about how amazing they are, they talk about um, their services, they don't talk about anyone's pain points or desires, Basically, you can tell from the ad all they want is to take your money. That's a very, very amateurish thing to do in terms of running ads. And in some instances, it can work on some platforms and in some target audiences, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, it doesn't work very well on LinkedIn. Your ads need to be focused on the solution and need to be focused on your target audience. Next up, they don't use efficient funnels. So they might have a, a structure set up or they'll have an ad, it goes to a landing page, etc. But they could be using far more efficient methods of converting clients. So for example, instead of using a landing page, they could be using a lead form and that would make their uh, funnel way more efficient. Little things like this means their funnels aren't as efficient and therefore their ads end up costing them way more money than they need to. So here are some things that you need to avoid like the plague. These are things I hear companies doing very often whenever we speak to companies, they say, well, we're thinking about doing this or we have been doing this, it hasn't been working. So we're gonna save you a bit of time and tell you to avoid everything I mentioned right now. So the first thing is someone says, let's run an ad campaign to get more followers on our company page. And I can tell you now, do not do that. It's a massive waste of time and money. Company pages on LinkedIn do not get anywhere near the same engagement that personal pages do on LinkedIn. And that's the algorithm uh, giving preferential treatment to personal pages over company pages. The reason is company pages are revenue generating. And as a result, LinkedIn wants you to use the ad section of the company page rather than just posting organically and being able to bring clients to you that way. So by running ad campaigns that just try and get you followers, you get followers to your company page and then you post organically and nothing happens because that's sort of where the buck stops. So you really don't wanna spend your money in that way. There are far more efficient methods that you can uh, use to get new clients on LinkedIn and company page followers is not one of them. If you do want to do content marketing on LinkedIn, then I'd, it does work. I'd recommend doing it through the senior executives of your company and doing it through their personal pages. So the CEO, the CMO, um, anyone high up in your company, create content for them, push it out on their personal pages, and that'll be more effective than a company page. And another thing is let's run a visibility campaign. This could be things like we're gonna run ads to blog posts, or we're going to boost posts that did moderately well on another platform. There's no other focus on that rather than to get yourself in front of people. Increasing visibility is a problem that a lot of people have and they think if we increase visibility, if more people know about us, surely we'll get more business. However, on LinkedIn, you get, and on any social media platform such as Facebook, you get visibility as a passive bonus for running any ad campaign. So if you ran an ad campaign that was giving away a white paper, but you had to submit a lead form, you would be seen by the same amount of people if you then if you just ran ads to a blog post, for example. So in terms of increasing visibility, it's better to have a tangible goal, such as trying to acquire new leads or demos or get quotes, etc., um, than it is to just run 
um, ads to get traffic to your website. So how can you figure out if LinkedIn ads are right for you? What are the, the key metrics you need to be looking at? Well, first off, it's your average order value. Because LinkedIn is an expensive platform, because it's B2B, you need to have high average order values to make it worthwhile. That's a strategic thing, that's outside of the platform. You can run really good ads, but if you don't have a high enough average order value, it will never work out in the long term because you won't be able to match the amount you have to spend to acquire a client. The average order values that tend to work are anywhere, it depends, but at minimum of a thousand pound average order value, but more likely and easier is 3000, and then it goes up and up and up and becomes easier the higher you get. Obviously the funnel changes, but if you're looking at maybe 10,000, 20,000 average order value per client, then it's very difficult to make LinkedIn not work for you, for example. You also need to have a follow-up process. LinkedIn, because it has that entire spectrum of your audience, as I spoke about earlier, you might not be speaking to people who are immediately ready to buy. You might be speaking to people who are thinking about a solution, but haven't yet taken the dive, or they're considering different suppliers. So you need sales development reps, and you need follow-up processes in place to be able to nurture leads to get them from being a lead to being a, a new client or a new customer. Also, you need to be taking advantage of LinkedIn's targeting. So you need to have a specific industry, specific job titles, roles, etc., that you want to go after. If you're a generic style business, you might actually find that Facebook is better for you because you're not utilizing the full potential of LinkedIn. If you just wanna to speak to small business owners, LinkedIn's not right for you. Also, this is a massive point. You need to have had a proven track record of selling your service outside of LinkedIn. You need to make sure that you can already sell your service through some other means, whether that be manually, uh, manually get in contact with people through some other platform like PP, like Google, PPC, or Facebook ads. You need to make sure your structure and your model works elsewhere. If you can't sell your solution or your service for the life of you anywhere else, don't think that ads are gonna solve the problem. If you can't sell your solution anywhere else, ads are not the solution, they're not the magic pill. The issue lies elsewhere within your business. Now I appreciate sometimes it can be hard to understand what that is. Again, as I said earlier, my company Tech Growth Marketing are currently giving away free marketing strategy sessions. If you want us to have a chat with you to figure out if LinkedIn ads is right for you, if you can't figure out what's going wrong with some other platform, then by all means apply, link in the description below. And just remember, there are exceptions to all of these rules. Everything I say in this video, you can break the rules. It's just that 80 to 90% of people will need to follow what I'm saying in this video. So what does a typical LinkedIn ads funnel look like? Now I had someone message me the other day because they'd seen some of our content, they'd seen some of our guides in terms of LinkedIn, and they said, this is all fairly simple. We were looking for something a little bit more complex, or we were looking for a new strategy. The reality is, it's really simple. There is no secret thing that you don't know about that's immediately gonna make LinkedIn work. It is very, very simple. The things that make it work are just sticking to the simplicity and doing it consistently and doing it very well. And then the success is also outside of LinkedIn. What are you doing with your follow-up? Can you add more upsells to your existing customers to make sure the average order value increases because you have more upsells, you have more services, and therefore because the average order value has increased, you can pay more for a client because you get more back, things like that. So I'm gonna talk you through the uh, most common funnel setups for ads on LinkedIn. A funnel is basically the whole process someone goes through from seeing your ad to um, signing up to be a customer, you get in contact with them, et cetera, et cetera. So the first funnel type is a lead generation funnel uh, based around high value gated content. So you'd be giving away free white papers, free eBooks, toolkits, things like that, a free resource to your target audience. The principle behind this is you create this resource uh, guide about the problem that your audience currently has that you resolve and you target that to obviously the people you want to speak to. When someone downloads that guide, they have to fill out their lead information, so they have to submit their name, telephone number, email address, LinkedIn profile URL, company, etc., etc. You define what you ask for, uh, ask them for, but you get their lead information. Now you can be pretty certain if you created a guide around the problem that you resolve and someone in your target audience has downloaded it, they're probably somewhere within your pipeline in terms of they have the problem, they're looking for a solution, etc. So you can then follow up with those people to try and convert them further down the line. Now this is particularly effective for B2B because B2B interactions tend to be way more in depth. They tend to require a bit of a relationship, a bit of rapport. You can't just go, do you wanna buy something? Yes, we're gonna work together for 
12 months, okay, here's the, here's the contract, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't tend to work that way. You need to have built up some rapport, they need to trust you, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the first step of a relationship. It's opening up the um, conversation with people in your target audience, basically. As a result of it being early funnel lead generation, they haven't said, I want to buy your solution. They've just said, I have the problem. You need to have a follow-up sequence beyond that. So what does it look like? Well, you have your ad first, they download that ad, and then um, they get put into a follow-up sequence. They go onto a landing page. The landing page has an upsell, which tries to take them onto the next step of the sales process. Gives them their resource, obviously. And then beyond that, you have follow-up. So uh, follow-up email sequences, trying to upsell. You would reach out to those people and offer them more value. Don't try and sell them straight away, but you'd say, do you want any more help with this, X, Y, Z? Um, you would also put them into remarketing campaigns. So they've interacted with you, they've identified themselves as having the problem. You would then put them into a, a separate campaign which does try to sell your solution or the next step of your sales process because you've identified those people as having the problem. So they would be eligible for an ad that's more focused on a solution such as a service. Next up is the sign up funnel. This works well for software companies such as SaaS companies. Basically, what this funnel looks like is you have your advert, your advert leads to your website, and then someone would sign up for a free trial of your service on your website, and that's it, pretty much. Very, very, very simple uh, funnel. Does this work? Yes. Does it work all the time? Definitely not. So this works if you have a really, really good offer. A seven day free trial is an okay offer. Some people have free accounts for life such as Canva, they have, it's not a free trial. You sign up, you get a free account, eventually you'll probably become a paying user. Might take six months, might take a year, but eventually you most likely will become a paying user. So that's the offer. Now, whether this works or not depends on a load of different factors. It depends on your solution, it depends on your target audience, it depends on how many competitors there are in the market. So that whilst this is a very, very simple funnel, and whilst it gets people a lot closer than an, an early funnel lead generation, campaign with high value gated content it um, doesn't always work so it depends on your solution worth trialing if you can use it potentially but if not you've always got other solutions next up is a demo funnel this could also be a free consultation funnel it's basically getting someone to speak to one of your sales development reps on a sales call but the purpose of that sales call is try and help someone figure out what their problems are and help them resolve those issues your solution being one of the solutions to that issue so hopefully they become a client how do these funnels work? Well, this is a really simple funnel. Essentially, you have your advert. The advert leads to a lead form. That lead form is submitted and then your sales development reps follow up with those people to, um, to, to run your sales call. Now, again, this seems like a very simple funnel and it is. Um, the thing is, it again, only works in specific instances. You can do this to a cold audience, but it is very rare that this works. Very, very rare. We've seen it work but it doesn't happen all the time. So probably about 10% of the time this works, maybe sometimes more. It depends on your target audience again, it depends on your solution, it depends on competitors in the market, it even depends on your brand reputation. If you're well known, you can probably do this and it'll work. If no one knows who you exist, you probably won't get away with doing this. These campaigns tend to work best as remarketing campaigns. So someone who's already visited your website, someone who's already on a mailing list, who has interacted with an ad in a previous funnel, such as a lead generation campaign funnel, that's when these ads tend to work best. So the last funnel is a webinar funnel. It's very common on LinkedIn for companies to use webinars to try and generate new business. The premise is, you run ads to the webinar, people then register, a certain amount of those people who register will show up, some people won't. A certain amount of the people who attend the webinar will then apply for the next step. So within the webinar, you should obviously be selling your services and saying, please get in contact with us. There's a drop off at every single point. There is in every single ad campaign, all marketing ever, basically. This is fairly simple, again. Uh, so you have your advert, the advert goes to a lead form, which is basically gives information about the webinar. You click register, and then afterwards you have someone follow up to remind them of the event. You can send them to a web page which has a calendar link, so they can immediately put it into their calendar. Um, and that's basically it. You then just have to look at different ways you can use to increase attendance and decrease the um, cost per registration by testing different ad types. So targeting on LinkedIn, I'm gonna talk through what the different approaches are and the pros and cons of each in terms of precision of accuracy in terms of the people you wanna to get to and in terms of cost. So the first off is job title. You can target people based on their specific job title. This is a very, very, very precise method of um, targeting because you can say, I only want to speak to marketing managers. However, 
It's also very, very expensive and it's expensive because it's so specific. So there is a drawback that you won't be aware of when you first start using the platform. And that drawback is essentially uh, the job title field within LinkedIn is a free text field. You can put in marketing manager, happy fun times, um, love my job. That can be your job title, okay? Whereas in the back end of LinkedIn where you put in your criteria for targeting job titles, LinkedIn predefines those job titles, which says marketing manager, global marketing manager. And as a result of that uh, separation between free text field and predefined list of fields, LinkedIn tries to link them up, but it's never gonna be accurate. So whilst it's very precise, you will be missing out on a huge swathe of people who are probably your target audience, but have just typed in their um, job title slightly differently. So job title focused targeting is very specific, but very, very expensive as a result. Another way of targeting is on job function and seniority. I want to target people who have the job function of marketing and are senior. Now this is a way more broad uh, method of targeting and as a result, it's way cheaper. But you tend to get higher volume because you don't run into that free text, fixed text issue that you have with job titles you tend to get a broader range of people. So you might only have 20,000 people when you type in a job title, but then if you do the mix of seniority and job function, you might have 50,000 people. So it opens up your audience, which as a result reduces the cost. Next up is skills and seniority. This is just an alternative take on job function and seniority, kind of similar, a little bit more expensive than job function and seniority. Um, again, you have a broad audience and you have a relatively high volume. And finally is groups and seniority. Um, this is quite precise. It gives you a relatively low volume and is moderately expensive. This would be people who have joined specific LinkedIn groups, for example. Um, this, in my opinion, is a bit more hit and miss. Test it, definitely test it. But my personal recommendation would be to stick with job titles, even though it's more expensive, and then also job seniority and function. Next within LinkedIn, there are different ad objectives. Uh, these are things that you want to get out of the platform for your campaign. You need to pick one of these things and picking different options gives you different features within LinkedIn. I'm gonna tell you what the best ones are and the ones you should avoid. In terms of objectives, the best ones in my opinion are lead generation and website visits. The lead generation objective unlocks the ability for you to utilize uh, LinkedIn lead forms, which are one of the most powerful uh, things on the platform. It's a pre-filled out form. So someone clicks a button, they get a pre-filled out form within LinkedIn, they press one button, it submits, and then you have your follow-up after that. Because there's less friction, because it's so simple, uh, you tend to get leads at a far lower cost. So we've had campaigns that send people to a website and campaigns that use a lead form. And we've literally halved the cost of leads webinar signups and demos just by switching to a lead form instead of sending someone to an external site. So that's why lead, uh, lead forms are so uh, useful and why the lead generation campaign objective is amazing. Sometimes though, you do wanna send people to your website. There is a need to send someone to the website. They might need to see more information. Um, it might be that you have a free trial and you simply cannot do that through LinkedIn lead forms. If you're going down that route, I would strongly recommend going for website visits because we've just found it's the best performing one in terms of getting traffic to your website because at that point, ultimately what you're doing is trying to pay for traffic. In terms of things you should avoid, I would strongly recommend avoiding uh, optimizing based on conversions or having your objective as conversions. LinkedIn leads, needs a lot of data to be able to optimize for conversion campaigns and you don't tend to get that on LinkedIn unless you're spending a lot of money. You need to be seeing like 50 to 100 conversions a week on a website for LinkedIn to be able to properly optimize um, that campaign. And that very rarely happens. So I would strongly recommend avoiding that and just going down the website visits route if you're trying to get that. You can still manually look at what conversions you're getting and optimize in that way, changing your ad copy, looking at your click-through rates, etc. I'd also avoid brand awareness as an objective. It doesn't really work out. And engagement can work, but it's very, very specific. So as I say, I would probably focus on website visits and lead generation as your primary campaign objectives. So when you build out your audience, you'll have an audience size. What is the ideal audience size that you want to be looking at? Well, if you want to pick a rough number, you'll be looking somewhere between 50,000 and 100,000. So 75, 80,000 is kind of the sweet spot. However, it depends massively on your exact situation, your audience, what your solution is, all these different factors. The issue is the smaller your audience is, the more you pay per impression. You're being very specific and as a result, LinkedIn charges you for that privilege. So 
Too small means you don't have enough people to run your ads at scale. Your ads might work for a short period of time, but after that, everyone in your audience, if you've only got 2,000 people you're targeting, they all see your advert and go, okay, everyone who's gonna click the ad has clicked the ad, that's it, end of our campaign, that lasted a month maybe. Um, whereas if your campaign's way too big, then it turn, it's probably quite likely that your ads aren't specific enough, people aren't gonna res resonate with it enough. So somewhere between 50,000 to 100,000 in the middle, that kind of range is the ideal, but there are cases that could be made for smaller, more specific audiences or larger. As a rule of thumb, use that as a guide. Now in terms of bidding, how should you bid on your ads? Well, we've tested loads of different methods of bidding and honestly, we found that the um, automated bidding system actually works pretty damn well. So if you're starting out, I, sh I would recommend just going with the automated bidding system. You can um, test different bidding methods, such as bidding based on impressions and bidding uh, based on target cost per clicks, depending on what uh, type of ad campaign you're running, whether you're running website visits or lead generation. If you're gonna do that, I'd recommend duplicating the campaign instead of changing things in one campaign. So you have one campaign that's been working with automated bidding, duplicate it, change the criteria to bidding based on cost per click or cost per impression, and then you can look at each campaign and see which one's doing better. We've done that quite a few times, and we always find that the automated bidding option outperforms in terms of our end results, so in terms of leads, for example. So what are some of the numbers that you should be expecting when you look at LinkedIn? Now, I'm gonna talk sort of on average as to what we found. However, this varies dramatically. It varies depending on your target audience. We found HR, for, for some reason, is a very, very expensive audience to target. We found that the US is one of the most expensive places to target because so many people run ads in the US. Things like this will affect your cost per click, your cost per lead, your cost per thousand impressions, etc. So take this with a pinch of salt. The only way you're gonna know is to run your own ads. However, generally speaking, you can be looking at cost per click of somewhere between $3 to about 6 to $7 if you're doing fairly well. Again, it depends on your solution. Uh, you can be looking at a cost per lead. The lowest we've ever had a cost per lead is six pounds. So I suppose that's about um, $8 or $9 uh, per lead up to we've had campaigns that have been uh, that have worked and are getting leads at around about 40 pounds so maybe 45 46 dollars if you're going above that it's probably not going to work out but in some instances it can that's for early funnel lead generation in terms of if you were booking things like demos for b2b SaaS companies we've seen demos as low as 150 dollars on remarketing um, campaign we've also seen them go up to $500, $600, which can still work, but that's specific to your exact situation. In terms of cost per CPM, which is cost per thousand impressions, again, this varies wildly depending on who you're targeting, where in the world, but average, we're talking maybe 30 pounds, 33, $34, something like that, up to the highest we've had is uh, I think $120 per thousand impressions. But that ad campaign actually worked in terms of giving us our end results. So whilst the cost per thousand impressions was so high, we tried loads of different bidding methods, it still worked. So ultimately your key focus should be the end result, what you actually want out of the campaign, be that leads or signups or conversions on your website. But you can use all these different figures to figure out if you're going in the right direction. Also, let's look at the average cost per click in terms of percentage and your average um, engagement rate. We found cost per click, you're doing fairly well if you're at 0.3%, that's sort of average, 03 to 0.4% is average. If you're above that, you're doing quite well. If you're below that, you're not doing very well. In terms of engagement rates, we tend to see engagement rates of 0.7% to 1%. Sometimes can go up higher and higher. We tend to use cost per click and cost per lead as our main metrics. Um, engagement rates can just be an indication as to which ads are starting to perform better. These vary dramatically based on the different types of ads though. So you can have uh, single image ads, you can have carousel ads, and I'll talk about all that in a second but all those numbers vary depending on those different ad types so the different ad types you have a selection you have single image ads you have carousel ads you have dynamic ads that appear on the sidebar you have video ads you have all these different things which should you choose we found the most effective ad types are single image ads carousel ads and video ads those are the three that i would focus on and here are the pros and cons of each 
So image ads tend to be really good for things like high value gated content offers. If you're giving away a white paper, we'd recommend not messing around, just doing a single image ad with a lead form. If you're giving away things like free trials or demos or things that are a bit more involved, you should test different ad types because it does vary depending on your solution, your target audience, but we'd recommend something a bit more in depth. So a carousel or a video, but still image ads can work for those things as well. So test it, but if you were going with something a bit more in depth, people tend to need a bit more information and you cannot get that across in a single image and as a result video and carousel both work best in those situations usually so you now know strategically what you need to do you know how the funnels need to be set up you even know some numbers that you should be looking at what are the steps you now need to take to actually build out your campaign you've decided you want to use linkedin you know it's the right platform for you you know what you need to do when you get in there now with different ad types what do you do to build out a campaign where well, it's a pretty simple process it's only five steps and i'll talk through those so step one is market research this is a really simple simple step you should have done this for your company anyway but a lot of companies overlook this step or they do market research and it's a sort of butchered version of market research that isn't really going to help them run ads in terms of market research what I mean is asking your target audience what their pains are what their desires are what their motivations are and what their um what they're what sort of stopping them from taking action once you understand all that and you understand that in the language that they use to describe it you have everything you need to write persuasive copy, persuasive landing pages, to write content that speaks to their needs and desires and their pain points. And that's what makes advertising really work. It's understanding where that person is and where they want to get to and writing content, writing copy, focusing your, your ad campaigns around those things. So you have to do market research and you have to understand what your target audience is feeling and thinking in the words that they use to describe it. That is required to make anything else work. Once you've done that market research, you need to do your strategic planning. So for example, watch this video again and say, well, we know that we need an early funnel lead generation funnel. Let's go with that to begin with and then let's use a demo funnel afterwards as a remarketing campaign. Based on your market research, and based on things that you've seen work elsewhere and just things you've learned from being in business, you should be able to make the right decisions that will get you 70% of the way in terms of where you should be. Now I understand you might be thinking, I still don't know where I need to be. Remember, we are giving away free marketing strategy sessions. If you wanna click the link in the description below, you can apply and we'll obviously have a chat and we can probably help you figure out the right strategy for you based on all the, um, the knowledge we have from running ad campaigns for other people. Next up, step three, it's asset creation. You will create the ads. We create our ads in Canva. You'll write the ad copy. We do that in Whimsical. You'll basically get everything ready for the campaign. What most companies do, I should have put this earlier in the video, I suppose. What most companies do is they um, skip step one and step two and they go, we want an ad campaign. Let's create a nice new flashy website. Let's create some really cool adverts. And they do that section because it's fun because it is the most fun part of the, of the process. And then they launch the ads and they don't work. And the reason is they haven't done the groundwork, they haven't got the foundation to make them work. So asset creation is fun, but it's step three. You have to do the other steps to make it work. The next step is your campaign launch. Very simple, technical stuff. Upload the campaign into LinkedIn, press go. And the last step is to review and improve. A lot of people launch a campaign, they wait a few days, look at it and say, nah, probably not for us. And then they stop the campaign. They haven't given it enough time. They haven't tried to tweak it or improve it. They go through this endless cycle of asset creation, launch, back to asset creation, new stuff, trying new things, circle, 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 nothing ever works. Look at what's happening, figure out what's working, figure out what's not, tweak it. Go back, make some adjustments in the previous steps, but keep the same sort of approach tweak 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 and you just keep on trying to constantly improve it and that consistency leads to the results that you actually want i also have a few faqs here things that i've thought about whilst recording this video that i just want to let you know a lot of people ask how much money do we need to spend in terms of linkedin ads well you should be spending a minimum of one thousand dollars a month in terms of ad spend minimum but you should be spending way more than that it obviously depends on your solution it depends on how much cash flow you have you can get by in some instances with only spending a thousand dollars a month or, or a thousand pounds but i'd recommend going up as high as you can really but that's sort of the low end also if you are hiring someone else such as us to do a linkedin ad campaign for you how long does it take to get a linkedin ad campaign up and running well we found on average if you're looking at getting a, an ad campaign live, it takes roughly a month. So if you wanna go through that marketing um, research phase, if you wanna go through strategic creation, uh, the strategy creation, asset creation, technical upload, that takes roughly a month. But that's working 
pretty hard on it to be fair. That stuff does take time, it does take a, a bit of back and forth, but that's what you should expect. If you're thinking, we want an ad campaign, let's get it live immediately, chances are it's not gonna work. You can't get an ad campaign live in a day or two, or well, you can, but it probably won't be fantastically good. So just be aware of that. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Obviously, if you have any questions, there's a lot of information in here, but you probably have more questions. If you have more questions, just put a comment below and I will get back to you. Um, and if you do want to uh, take us up on that offer for a free marketing strategy session, by all means, there is a link in the description below. I would love to talk to you about what you're currently trying to achieve on LinkedIn. We can have a bit of a chat. You can steal some of the expertise in my head, use it yourself. And obviously, if you want to use our services, we offer LinkedIn advertising as a service. If you want to use some of that, just get in contact. You can do so via the same form in the link in the description below. Hope you've enjoyed the video. As I say, any questions, but, um, just put them in the comment section and if you can leave a like and subscribe that would be greatly appreciated. I'll speak to you really soon. Cheers.